Hey guys, it's Jaeger262, and welcome back to another Armored Warfare news episode. Now, I know I've been doing a bunch of these lately, some more important than others, some actually were just little features like that micro patch I covered. I'm going to try to stop doing things like that and just report on big stuff like this. I've already done the first two released vehicles for the new battle path, and this is the third one. And just like the other two, I am very excited to see more diverse divers vehicles being added. Uh, just like the Croatian MBT, this is actually a vehicle I've wanted in Armored Warfare for a very long time. But not one that I wanted too badly. It's the BWP-2000. And what that is, is if you can probably read while I'm not moving the page right now is a Polish AFV from the 1980s. It was the predecessor to the Rosomach, and that's why, even though I wanted it really badly, I was okay with the Rosomach, which is an amazing AFV at Tier 7 and at Tier 8. I highly encourage you guys to play it. But the reason I wanted this one in the game is it resembles, it's from the same school of design, or thought of design, as the German Marder AFVs or Pumas. And so, um, what that means is they're very heavy, they're cannon-oriented, as you can see right there, and they are just absolutely devastating. And for anybody that's encountered, seen, or maybe owns the Martyr 2, this will be a lot like that. Now, I don't know if it's going to play exactly like that vehicle, of course, but that is essentially what this is, and so that's why I've wanted one. Even though this is an event-exclusive, not a progression vehicle, I've always wanted a progression AFV like the Martyr 2. And so you can get a brief history of it here. Uh, there it is in testing before they actually put the turret on it. There's the first turret and there was two prototypes with a different turret which I believe is this one you see here it was a prototype. And here's the model in the game. The reason I'm skipping over all this stuff, you can go back and read it, it's a very good article, is I actually want to talk just like the first vehicle in the battle path less about its history and more about what it's like in the game and why I think it's going to be the best if not at least the most interesting addition to armored warfare in terms of this battle path second only to I guess the BVP we're getting and that is because this is one this is the model in the game but as you'll notice, it has a 16 millimeter autocannon. And the reason that's so important is because I thought they were going to change it. There was a, it wasn't made for export, but just like the, the Yugoslav, or sorry, Croatian main battle tank, there was a gun that was smaller than this one, optimized to be used with different militaries. The indigenous gun on it was 60 millimeters, and so I was worried at first that they would drop it down to the lower caliber but they did not it will be the full 60 millimeter gun which will hit incredibly hard just like the martyrs 57 millimeter gun does the only difference and the only way that they kind of regulate that is that if you'll see here they put it with a 16 round clip now you will be able to fire i believe hesh and apcr so it will be incredibly devastating even though Again, it's just a 16 round clip. Now, the 16 rounds, I think, is a great way to balance this. It's not only realistic, because it was only a 16 round drum inside, but the 10 second reload between each drum allows this vehicle to kind of be balanced. However, they changed something about the BVP, the BWP that was not included on the actual vehicle but at this time it's more of a theory craft vehicle it's more of since there was the BWP 2000 and then there was this huge break in between this AFV and what the Rosomach became the theory crafting is were they planning on putting ATGMs on this vehicle Armored Warfare says that they were uh, I haven't done any research past this article onto that specific topic but it works for me because I love the idea and this is where it continues the customization options of the battle path vehicles but also makes this vehicle deadlier 
than the martyr. And the only way I could think that this is not true is because of the missile loadouts that they have. So if you see here, they have a regular tow missile. They're both tandem. Or they're both tandem heat missiles, by the way. One's going to be the Polish Spike system, which gets a thousand millimeters of penetration and the 25 second reload time. And then the other one's just the normal tandem heat tow with 850. And so you've played both of these missiles in the game. If you played any high tier uh, ATGM tank destroyers, this missile here is what's used on the M1134 Premium tank destroyer. It's used on the NM142, and I believe it's used for the 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 weasel, but I'm not sure about that. This missile, the Spike missile, is used only on the Rosenmach Mark 1 at Tier 8. And this is why I think the vehicle will still be balanced. Because for anybody that's used that missile, knows it's not incredibly effective. Even though it does get a thousand millimeters of penetration, it rarely penetrates its targets. And the reason for that is... The only thing I think of is that because it's a self-guided missile, which is a huge perk in my opinion, but also a huge downfall is that the missiles tend to go towards the front of vehicles and try to hit the turret ring and so they always miss. Don't worry, just because it's self-guided doesn't mean that you actually have to use it self-guided. And so the way that I make my Rosomach effective using the spike weapon system is by just manually guiding the missiles. And they work fine, but not good enough for me to use it as the primary weapon. And so it's definitely a secondary countermeasure in between auto cannon firing. And for this vehicle that has a 10 second reload, it will be crucial to use these missiles during that window of reload. So that's about it for this vehicle right now in this preview. But I think that having the spike missiles is what's going to balance it. The only thing I could think of that would make this vehicle OP are the tow missiles. I mean, no matter what vehicle I've used these missiles on or what tier, they penetrate almost every single time. They do consistent damage. They're just an incredible weapon system. So I still don't know how the customization is going to work. I don't know if you'll unlock both missile systems or if you're going to have to get the premium vehicle and then research one or the other. But either way, this is going to be a very powerful addition, sorry about that, a very powerful addition to Armored Warfare, and I am very excited to see this vehicle in the game. I hope this battle path is easier for newer players or for more casual players. I hope a lot more people can engage with it and unlock all three of these vehicles. I mean, they're absolutely amazing. Um... I don't think there will be another reward vehicle in terms of just battle path assignments. I think that they're just going to keep it 3 for 3 like the last one. But when they do announce the tier 10, if they decide to go that route again, I'll do another video on that. But so far, three incredible vehicles, three really unique vehicles, and three vehicles that in their own aspects will be really strong, really aggressive additions to their class. I mean, the two AFVs that are being implemented in this battle path are just great in my opinion. So, can't wait for that battle path update. Can't wait to have an opportunity to and That's it. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed the content. Subscribe if you want to see more news videos or get notifications of when I do do another news video. And as always, Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.